you're watching this video, you probably have just gotten a lathe or else you are thinking about getting a lathe and you want to know some basic stuff about how to use it. Now a lathe is a simple tool. All it really does is it spins a piece of wood really fast. You can adjust that speed and you'll understand more about that later. What it does is it turns wood into various shapes. They have to be symmetrical, so any time you have a piece of wood that you've turned, it's going to be the same on one side as it is on the other because it's spinning. You can make bowls, urns, pencil holders, all kind of really cool stuff, and as you get more advanced, there's also some more complicated stuff that you can do that's not symmetrical. But for right now, let's just focus on symmetrical things. Bowl turning is like this. This is where you have it mounted like this, spinning like so, and you cut this inside out and shape it however you want. Lathe walking is an art form, so there really isn't an exact rule about what you have to make. You can make it any shape you want to. It's just a matter of what you want and what you need. So face turning is where you make things like that. Spindle turning is where you make things like chess pieces or candlesticks, and to some extent, pencil holders. And with that, you have your rough piece mounted in your lathe, something like I have it here. And then you cut it down until it looks something like what you want it to look like, like this chess queen I have here. And then you get it pretty close, and then you sand it down and make it finished, and then you cut it off here, and then you go out and you varnish it. We'll get to all that later, but just wanted to give you a basic idea of what we can do here. So originally, you're going to begin with a spindle, because that's where everyone learned how to cut things. Now, your spindle is not going to come around. You're going to buy it in a chunk of wood. It's going to look something like this. And you're going to, if you have the tools, make this into something that's pretty symmetrical. So this is like an inch and a half, an inch and a half. It's helpful if it's not oblong, but it doesn't have to be because you're going to cut it down into a circle here in a minute. If it's really big, like three or four inches, you may want to shave off the corners at a 45 degree angle to make it eight-sided instead of four-sided. But for right now, we're going to start with this. I have one in here already that I've already turned down to a round. This is called rough turning. You get it pretty close to what you want, and then you finish it off with other tools. Now, when you're using your lathe, the lathe spins it, but you have to use something else to cut it. And those are usually called chisels. There's several different shapes, about as many shapes as you can imagine. And I have quite a wide selection of them here. First of all, you have your skew. This is an angled head. It's sharpened from both sides. And the idea is that you poke this in there, and it takes a roughly, not exactly a triangular shape out of there, but an angled shape out of there. So you push it in like this as it's turning, and it's going to cut a shape that matches the head of the tool. We also have a gouge. A gouge has a semicircular head, and so it cuts out the round parts like this in the lathe. And you use this also for roughing things in a lot because it removes a lot of material very quickly. So those are your two basic tools. And there's a lot of other tools and there's a lot of other sizes of them. We'll get to those later. But we're going to do most of our stuff with those. So I'm just going to turn something on here really quick just to show you what it looks like and how it works, and then we'll start teaching you a little bit more about how to do it yourself. So you need to set the tools that you're not using someplace that will not vibrate off onto the ground, which will damage your tools and possibly fall on your foot, and also someplace that you can conveniently get at it. So various ways of doing this. Some people have a shelf down here that they drop the tools in. I have one back here, and I have a table. It's handy. So I'm going to start with my skew. I'm going to set my gouge off to the side. I've already done some work with this piece, but I'm just going to make a round bead here. As the name suggests, a bead looks like a bead. On a, on a necklace. Now I know you can't see the tool I'm cutting with. Don't worry, I'll show you that later. For right now, just watch how this changes as I push into it. And I'm just putting a little bit of pressure in here with my tool at the right angle, and that's shaping this piece. I can make it bigger and wider. And I can go deep and make it like an egg shape, or let's go ahead and cut it off and make a sphere. The beauty of a lathe is you can do whatever you want to. It's kind of like pottery in that sense, is that as you turn pottery, you move the mud around. With, with this, you're just moving the wood off of here and turning it into shavings instead. Now, you can do this as long as you want to. Next to here, I'm going to use my gouge. I'm going to make a cove next to it, like an ocean cove that means a little hole in the wood that's rounded, the opposite of a bead. So there's my bead next to a cove. Now depending on what you're wanting to do here, you can make a number of beads in a row, so they all have just a row of beads. You can make a bead in a cove and a bead in a cove. You can make two beads in one cove. You can do anything you want to. That's the beauty of it. And this might be a table leg if it was a really short table, or it might be a candlestick, anything you want to make out of it. Actually, that's the hard part with lathing is to actually come up with something that's 
new to do is that no one else has already done. So that's the basic idea of turning this down. So now I'm going to start at the beginning and show you how I do this and what we're using here and the basic steps that you need to know to do the same thing. So we'll be mentioning these parts a lot here in the future, so it's good for you to know what they are right now. This is called a spur center. You notice I had a chuck on here earlier. I use that all the time. It's super convenient, but it's also pretty expensive, and you probably don't have one if you're just starting out. So for right now, this is called a spur center. It has a little point in the middle, and it has four teeth around the outside edge that grab the wood and keep it from spinning when this tries to spin it. And you're trying to cut it. If it doesn't have a really tight grip in there, this will just spin against the wood and won't actually spin the wood like it's supposed to. So spur center. This is on the headstock. This is what actually turns the piece. The tailstock is down here, and this is adjustable slide back and forth to fit whatever piece you're putting in here. They have these come in different lengths, of course. So on the tailstock, we have what's called a live center. And that means that this spins on bearings independently of the headstock. What that means is that if you put this piece in here and you're spinning it like this, the tailstock, the live center on the tailstock will spin with it. That reduces friction and makes it a lot easier to do it, especially at high speeds. On the cheaper lathes, you're probably going to have a dead center. What that means is that this is locked solid. There are no bearings in it. And so this is expected to spin just on the point. Now, in theory, that works OK. But in reality, it winds up smoking and burning and causing a lot of extra friction. And personally, I've always had trouble with that. So you can get a cheap live center on eBay for your lay, like 20, 30 bucks usually. And so that's your starting out. Now, this is called the rest. This is where you put your tool because you need the leverage. Because otherwise, if this is spinning in there and you're holding some big tool on like this, and all of a sudden it catches on here, you know, you're just your hand can't hold this. It's going to be a lot of force. So you need to have this up there to give you the leverage so that rather than having it just waving out there in the air, which would be totally unsafe, you're going to have this resting very close to the edge so that when this cuts, it's going to have a lot of force directed straight down and very little out of this very long handle out here so you can easily control it. Now, we need to put this rough spindle in there. So to do that, we need to hopefully find where center is because if we just poke it in there like this, it's going to be running out oblong and you're going to be winding up wasting a whole lot of wood and you won't get to get what you want. So you can buy a center finder on eBay for like five bucks. You don't have to have this. You can eyeball it, but it's probably a good idea to buy one at least if you're getting started. You set it in there and you use a pencil, draw a line that way and that way. And that's your center. Do that on both ends and then make sure that, that X it, this makes lines up with your headstock and your tailstock. And then you'll be pretty close to center every time. It won't be perfect, but it's close enough. So take this point and put it right in the middle of that X. So and then you tap it in. If you don't do this, it will not hold on there. You have to tap it in to the spur drive. Otherwise, this does not have enough pressure to really force it into that spindle. And so it'll wind up skipping here in a minute if we don't do it this way. All right, put the tail stock up. Make sure it's in the center. It, it doesn't have to be driven in because it's just here to be passive just to hold this spindle straight while it spins. And then tighten this up here. And you can lock this in place. I don't always do that. That keeps it from sliding back and forth a little bit. Um, but it's not a bad idea, especially if you're getting started to be safe. So now, before we turn it on, we've wait, we're a long way from turning it off yet. We need to adjust our lathe rest so that the height comes out to basically the middle of this line. Mine already is. And you need to spin this by hand a couple of times to make sure that when you turn this on, this is not going to catch the lathe rest and throw chips back at you or hurt your machine or something else. So you want to be as close as you reasonably can get, but not so close to actually touching. So I like to leave at least an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch to be on the safe side. That's pretty good there. I'm going to lock the lathe rest, make sure it didn't move after I locked the lathe rest. Okay, it doesn't hit. So now before we turn it on, let's discuss some quick safety tips. Obviously you need glasses. You can use the little glasses like this. They're easy to put on and take off, but they tend to have little gaps up here, and you can get pieces of wood bouncing up there. These are much better because they protect the dust from the sides as well. And just the dust getting in your eyes after a while, even if it's not the chips coming at speed, just a little bit of dust blowing up there can be a pain. So these help for that. Secondly, and more importantly, you need to make sure you don't have any long, loose clothing, like long sleeve shirts that kind of dangle off the sides, ties, no one wears ties anymore, but you know what I mean. Anything that's going to get wrapped around this lathe, loose clothes like this could get wrapped, drug around here. Next thing you know, your shirt's being pulled off, or possibly your neck being pulled off. Either one of those would be a bad thing. One's worse than the other. But regardless, loose clothing has to stay away from the lathe at all times. Nothing else needs to be sitting on the lathe, because it's going to vibrate off, I guarantee it. You, sit, you think it's going to sit here just fine, and you're walking over here paying attention to this. Next thing you know, it's on the floor. The lathes vibrate. That's what they do. So nothing's sitting on the lathe, no matter how tempting it is. And, and trust me, I know it's tempting. So now, let me get my glasses on. <coughs> 